views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hi, I'm George Bodarki, and this is Cityscape, a show I like to describe as an exploration of the people, places, and spirit of New York City. This is our Bronx edition, and today we are at the oldest surviving house in the Bronx, the Van Cortlandt House Museum right here in Van Cortlandt Park. And I heard a rumor that George Washington once slept here. Did he? I don't know. Let's go inside. to meet the Van Cortlands. And we are very happy to be met today. That's our guide, Laura Carpenter Myers. She's the director of the Van Cortland House Museum. She and I didn't waste any time diving into the history of this place. Laura, I can't tell you how excited I am to be at the Van Cortland House Museum. I am a native Bronxite, and I've never stepped foot through these doors before. And it's an extremely common reaction when people finally do make it here. So you're in very good company because a lot of your fellow Bronxites both past, present, and hopefully future, um, have that experience. And I'm actually kind of delighted that I get to be here for your first sort of discovery of the house. This is the oldest house in the borough of the Bronx, the oldest house. It's the oldest surviving house. Um, there were actually houses on this property that predated this one um, that were torn down to build before this one was built. But this is the oldest surviving. We have to qualify that. <laughs> so when was this house built? The house was built in 1748. It was actually begun in 1748 and not fully occupied until probably sometime in the early 1750s. I understand that this is on the site of what was once a wheat plantation? Yes, yes. If you noticed when you were coming in today, um, there's a huge field to the north of the house and it is now playing fields called the Parade Ground. Um, not, the par not to be mistaken with the Parade Ground in Prospect Park in Brooklyn, which sometimes happens as well, um, but that was part of the arable land that was on the family's plantation and they did grow wheat. The family being the Van, Van Cortland. Cortland. Yes, the Van Cortland family. The Van Cortland family really was the most um, noted landowner of this area. Um, some of the land was purchased from Frederick Phillips of Phillips Manor Hall fame up in Yonkers, about a mile and a half north of here up Broadway. Um, but really it's been held once it was purchased officially um, and amassed by the family. It was held within that one family for the whole period of time until it was sold to the city to be parkland and then later the house was given to the park. The house today does have a gate around it. Did yes. it always have a gate around it? It had a fence of some sort, um, nothing as formal as what we have today. The Actually the fence that we have around the house today um, was put in in 1954 um, and it was salvaged, as all good things are. Um, from the Delancey Street malls. If you've ever been in Lower Manhattan and you'll notice that there's those median um, and there's beautiful fence and they were reworking the streets at one point and salvaged enough fence, had it in a warehouse somewhere and voila, we got it. And it's really nice to have because it gives us a buffer from the larger park. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen this park when there are 20,000 cross country runners out on the field. And so it gives us a bit of a breathing space. So let's talk more about the Van Cortland family. When did they first come here, which I guess wasn't New York when they came here from Holland, right? Correct. They came during the New Amsterdam colonial period, and unlike some of the other English colonies, they came specifically not for, for religious, because of religious persecution. They didn't come for any sort of noble, noble purpose. Um, they came to bank money. Which Van Cortland, though, specifically built this house? This house was built by Frederick Van Cortland. Um, his father had given a piece of this property 
to him as a wedding present. And then Frederick kept adding and adding and adding to it. And when he was in his 50s, um, by 1748, he had um, three sons, two daughters, and was looking to sort of retire a little, per se, um, and so wanted to build a house that was kind of like his last house. Um, so make it elegant, large, comfortable, and yet compared to some other mansions or plantation houses in the 18th century, it's a little compact. It's one of those kind of, like it's almost like a TARDIS because it doesn't look as spacious on the outside as it is when you get inside. How and big is the house? How many rooms? There are eight rooms that people can see and it ranges from um, the, the influence of Frederick Van Cortland who started building the house but died before it was finished. Mm. His son James who lived in the house from approximately 1755 to about 1780 and then his son, his younger son um, Augustus who lived in the house from about 1780 to about 1830. How much of the furniture that's in the house today actually belonged to the Van Cortlands? It's, it's really only a handful, um, and it's a little misleading because we do have Van Cortland family Chinese export porcelain, that that as a group has about 120 pieces in it. So do we count that as one object or, an, or 120 objects? Do you feel like you're a member of the Van Cortland family? Not necessarily of the Van Cortland family, but I am very proprietary about this house. This is my house. Um, and it, it's sometimes hard to, to lose your perspective. Um, you know, I tend to notice things that people on a daily basis don't necessarily notice. Um, you know, even before we got started today, I was looking at something and thought, that doesn't look quite right. But <laughs> um, so on the one hand, it's a good thing. Um, and on the other hand, it can be a little difficult because sometimes I need to get outside perspective. Um, something that I may think is right for the house isn't necessarily so. And so sometimes you have to sort of divorce your ego out of it, which can be difficult. Now this is the oldest historic house museum in New York City. It is. This is actually, we have a couple really interesting bragging points. Um, in addition to being the oldest house in the Bronx, we are the first historic house museum, first house to be opened as a house museum in New York City and really got both the National Society of Colonial Dames of America, starting with their New York Society, um, down the road of historic preservation to where now there are 44 state societies of the Colonial Dames and each one of those state societies has at least one historic property that they manage and it all started with their work at Van Cortlandt House. Wow. Um, we're the fourth oldest house museum in the country um, behind Washington's headquarters in New Windsor, the Hermitage, which was Andrew Jackson's house, and Mount Vernon. Which is your favorite room in the house? Um, very selfishly, I'm going to say that it's the dining room that we have just completed um, an almost 17 year restoration project on. One thing that we do know, because we found physical evidence in this room below older plaster, was we found this wallpaper wow. and had it reproduced. Really? And so the room, it's a French paper from about 1820, and so the room has been reinterpreted to re represent Augustus Van Cortlandt's influence on the room. Um, and so we have federal style chairs, um, which are these chairs here, um, a Duncan Fife style table, we have a, a really great federal settee, and then some of the Van Cortlandt family pieces are in this room. How many bedrooms are in the house? There are currently two bedrooms. There were originally three bedrooms for the family. One of those bedrooms was turned into a room that represents, was the purpose of it was to represent the Dutch colonial period. Um, and it really has nothing to do with the house, but the colonial dames felt it was as important to preserve the Dutch colonial period or interpret the Dutch colonial period as it was the English colonial period. And as you know, in lower Manhattan, there's very little left that represents the Dutch colonial period. Laura gave me a peek into that Dutch colonial bedroom where people kind of slept in a closet. In a closet. Um, they're called nook beds or closet beds. And the way that this worked was that um, you had two compartments and the children would sleep in the lower compartment and then the parents would sleep or the grown-ups or other generations would sleep in the upper level. And there is some ventilation. I don't know if you can notice uh -huh, the yeah, here. Oh yeah, see that? To get up into bed, they had bed steps. A ladder. Yeah. I would have needed one of those. <laughs> yeah, as, as would I. <laughs> but the fact that it's enclosed because it's a little bit higher, you didn't have to worry about rolling out of bed. What was daily life like here for the Van Cortlands? <laughs> well, the Van Cortlands had it pretty good because they were of a level of society and wealth that um, they were not of the working class per se, um, and so. 
you didn't have to worry about cooking your own breakfast, um, spinning wool to make into cloth for your own clothes. Um, so it was pretty luxurious. Did they have slaves? Yes. Because they did have slaves. Yes. A lot of old homes like to claim that George Washington slept here. <laughs> Let me ask the question, did George Washington sleep here? Absolutely. He, he was here at least three times that we know of. Um, one time was early in the war around 1777, um, right after the Battle of Brooklyn. And with that, we headed upstairs where GW himself slept. So Laura, George Washington would have walked up these stairs yes. to go to bed? Yes. Um, to go to bed, and of all the things in the house that George might have interacted with, we really don't have anything except the floor. George Washington slept in the house, but he walked on these floors. George Washington walked <laughs> yes. on these floors. These are the original floors of the house. So 270 years old, they're made out of pine, which um, to modern times as a building material, we think of pine as a very soft wood, but this was old growth hardwood pine and you just can't replicate it anymore. I mean if you see some of these floorboards are more than a foot wide um, and the way the house was built the floorboards actually run under these walls. Really? Well if you if follow the lines of the boards and you can see. So Laura, George Washington would have slept in this bedroom yes. here? Yes, this was um, because of its advantageous views out of to the, to the west and to the south and because it was sort of the best bedroom, when Washington was here, it would have been given over to him because he was the best visitor. Let's take a look inside. Sure. And here are George Washington's boots. Well, they're not exactly <laughs> George's boots. It's not George's hat, it's not his regimental, but it is representative of what Washington would have worn. This is also a reproduction of his officer's sash that he would have worn under his regimental. And um, as the commander in chief, he wore the, the pale blue moiré. I would imagine there is no bathroom behind any of these doors. <laughs> no. So this, where did they this go? This actually, George, this is, is your, it. This, this is, is the, the bathroom. bathroom. <laughs> you have everything you need. You have your running water that would have been brought up in the morning. You have your sink. You've got a very convenient sponge. Um, and then this is the shaving bowl that gets held up. Uh -huh. oh, has a cutout for the okay, neck, yeah, little, right in the mm -hmm. lather, and then all the mess would go in uh -huh. there. Yep. And a toothbrush. They did have toothbrushes yes, back then. Yes, they absolutely had toothbrushes back then. That's another myth. Um, and then this is the towel. It's made out of linen, um, not the cotton fluffy towels that we have today, but highly absorbent. They're actually really great to use as a towel. If you had the opportunity to ask a Van Cortland one <gasps> question today, wow. what would that question be? That's a loaded question. <laughs> I might ask them, what happened to all the primary source material for this house? We don't have letters, we don't have diaries, we don't have journals. We have only a handful of records that went through the legal system, so probated wills. But we don't have a good picture of the, the full lives of the people who lived in this house. You know, we that don't, certainly we, would have made your job a whole lot easier. A lot easier, <laughs> we just don't know. So a lot of it is speculative. Nevertheless, the house is packed with history. If you want to visit it for yourself, find out more information at vchm.org. Talk about reliving the past. I don't know about you, but I feel so enriched by having absorbed all of that history right here at the Van Cortlandt House Museum in the Bronx. I want to thank Laura for that amazing tour. I'm George Bolraki. Thanks so much for watching.